Okay. So that's what led up to the shooting situation. Which led up to well, these these series of events. So, yes. So, you know, the so, argument with yes. Jimmy Henchman on the yes. phone and the threats. And, yes. And the, so now the tough he talk goes there. Yeah. He ends up getting jammed up in the hallway from whatever story was told by everybody who was there, mm-hmm. right? Whoever was there told the story. He ends up getting shot. He goes upstairs. He. He has his gun that he came to the studio with. He hides it in a piano. Mm -hmm. And then what everybody don't know is that Pac called Big after that incident, right? And said, Big, I left my gun in the studio. Send somebody to get it. Mm -hmm. So I sent somebody, two people up to the studio. One of them is the only person who had access because it was taped off being investigated. He was the only one could get past that yellow tape. We retrieved Tupac's gun and made sure that, because if Tupac had it got caught with that gun, because think about it, he did, everybody's story is Tupac pulled his gun out, he shot himself, all right, but no, Big, his man, <laughs> he called his man and said, yo, Big, you know, but everybody want to make it seem like Tupac set Big up in the studio. Big set Tupac up. Yeah, in the studio. Big set right. Tupac up exactly. In the studio. But but what you're telling me is that after the shooting occurred, Big was the first person he called for, he help called for help to help him get to, rid to, of, to, of the, an illegal gun, essentially, illegal which gun. he would have caught another charge for. Exactly. Got it. Right. So basically, after the shooting, Tupac and Biggie were still on good on terms. On good terms. Got it. Got it. 